Today I want to explain my submission to Steve Yeggy's Farmer Dog Chicken Grain Puzzle. My solution is lazy due to Concat and Four, and I hope that this solution is somewhat understandable to non-closure programmers. But of course, I also want to transform this solution into an eager one with the help of transducers. Okay, maybe let's start by understanding the problem. If you already know this famous puzzle, feel free to skip to the next section. So there is a farmer with a dog chicken and some grain and he wants to cross a river from west to east. So initially farmer, dog, chicken and grain are on the west bank and at the end they should end up on the east bank. There is a boat which can be used to travel over the river but unfortunately the boat only supports the farmer plus one additional item so he can't simply take all of all of his belongings to the other side. That would be too simple. Okay, and there's some additional rules. So for example, if the farmer takes the dog to the other side, then the chicken is left alone with the grain and then the chicken will eat the grain. That's forbidden. And if the farmer takes the grain, then the dog is left alone with the chicken and the dog will eat the chicken. That's also bad. Okay, the farmer could travel alone and that's quite an interesting conundrum. So what now? <laughs> Would the dog eat the chicken and then we would be left alone with dog and grain? Or would the chicken eat the grain and we would be left alone with dog and chicken? Or would the dog also eat the chicken and then there would only be the dog left? <laughs> so fortunately we don't hand have to handle this conundrum because from here the, other, uh, the only other legal move is for the farmer to return solo. Then we have a state that we already saw and that's cut away from the solution space anyway. There's nowhere left to go from here. <laughs> okay, um, so the first only legal move is for the farmer to take the chicken, then the dog is left alone with the grain and dogs don't like to eat grain apparently. Okay, and then <laughs> if he returns the chicken back to the West Bank, then of course that would be uh, nonsense. We already saw that state, um, that, that wouldn't make any sense. Okay, so What we have to do is take the chicken to the east, then return solo. And from here on, there are two possibilities. The farmer could either take the dog or he could take the grain. Uh, both, um, both ways will lead to a solution. If you want to, you can pause the video and figure it out for yourself. Okay, so now that we understand the puzzle, um, let's see how the code works. So here's a recursive function. It, um, it stores the farmer in a simple Boolean. So we simply store if the farmer is on the, west, uh, on the west or the east because the farmer will always travel back and forth. So we don't really have to store that information in uh, anywhere else. And then we have the farmer bank, which is initially a set of dog, chicken and grain. And we have the other bank, which is initially empty. Okay, this is our entire state. And this, uh, the legal states will be uh, pushed into the history so we can remember all the states that we were already in. Okay, and then we have some um, interesting cases. So if the farmer is on the east bank and the dog, chicken and grain are on the farmer bank, then we're done. That's a solution. And then we return a vector, uh, a singleton vector with the current path in it. So for example, that could be chicken, solo dog chicken grain solo chicken that would be one possible solution okay but we don't return the path itself we return a singleton vector because uh, in the end the cross function should return all possible paths okay if the state uh, was already in the history then we return an empty vector no possible path from here and if the other bank is either dog chicken or chicken grain, these are the bad states, then we also return an empty path. Right? So we simply have a, a set of all the bad cases and if the other bank is contained in that set, then that's bad. Okay, otherwise we have to recursively call ourselves. We call ourselves once for the case where the farmer travels alone. That would be uh, the nils in the path here. Then the, um, the banks simply switch, so the other bank becomes the farmer bank the farmer bank becomes the other band and the farmer east is flipped. Okay, and of course we have to conch the state onto the history. And then for every item on the farmer bank, initially that would be three different items, dog, chicken or grain, we also have to recursively call ourselves, but then 
the other bank where we travel um, to yeah, also has the X then because the farmer takes the X with him and where the farmer currently stands, the X has to be removed, of course. And the rest is the same except for the nil. That is now the item that we take with us. Okay, so does this actually work? Let's compile and run this here. And with pretty printing, we can see two possible solutions. Uh, the first one is the one that I have here in the comment. And the second one is simply a, a mirror image of that. So if you read that from right to left, dog, chicken, grain, and the rest is exactly the same. Um, yeah, so that makes sense. If you, <laughs> if you find a solution, then if you reverse time, that should also be a valid solution because West and East have no special meaning in general, of course. Okay, so that's the lazy solution. How can we now make that eager? And I tried to simplify this complicated expression here to just um, factors of number. So here you can see the example. So let's say the solo recursive call returns three possible paths. So every integer here represents one possible path. Of course, in general, we only have two, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And then the for loop returns its own lazy sequence and inside that lazy sequence there could be yeah multiple vectors of individual paths okay how do we combine these two the solo case and the non-solo cases we could simply cons the solo case onto the non-solo cases then we would get a list with path vectors inside and if we wanted to combine those then we have to concat them which apparently has no effect <laughs> because we only pass a single argument to concat this um, con cell or this list. What we really want to do is pass the vectors inside the list as individual arguments. And we do that by applying the concat function. Then we get uh, nine possible paths. Okay. And as it turns out, the apply function doesn't only work for a function and arguments. We can also um, prepend the arguments with an individual argument, then we don't really need the cons before. We can simply here yeah, move the one, two, three here uh, between the concat and the um, and the other arguments, and then it, it works exactly the same. This is just a bit shorter. Okay, and the next step is then to turn that eager. How do we do that? We use the into function, it takes some collection, a transducer and then a <laughs> collection of other stuff and it will simply concatenate this collection onto that collection and then this collection also onto that. That should also work. Yeah, there we go. And now instead of a lazy sequence, we have a persistent vector, which is eager. Okay, so how would we apply this to our uh, puzzle? That would look like this. So the one, two, three, is our um, solo recursive call. The cat is the cat, of course. And then here, the list of vectors is our for comprehension of the non-solo recursive calls. And if I compile that and try that out, then here we get our solution now as a persistent vector. Okay, um, cool. So initially I was quite satisfied with that, but we still have our lazy for comprehension here, right? So it will be immediately resolved by the intro, but we have some lazy intermediate garbage. And I, I was quite sad about that. And, and I thought about how can we get rid of that lazy intermediate garbage. Okay, so here in line 63, we pretended that the list of path vectors was already there, but of course it's computed somehow. Um, uh, in our case, it was computed by a for comprehension here, this for comprehension, and here I simply um, try to apply that to the uh, to the dummy example here. So instead of saying four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine, we have a for comprehension that says I want to start at seven and have a range from. Uh, I'm sorry, I want to start at four, have a range from four to seven, and I want to start at seven, have a range from seven um, to ten. So that also works um, beautifully. Okay, and this is maybe yeah, quite complicated, or it makes sense to extract it into its own function. That would be the function called three. You can see that's, that's exactly the same as here. And now uh, we can apply the for comprehension like this. And now we can immediately see, 
uh, see, okay, so a four comprehension where x uh, is taken from four and seven, and then we apply three to x, that's just a simple map, right? We map the three function over all the x's from our four seven vector. So we could also write it um, like this, and then we get the same result. And why is this so interesting or important? Because now we can say, hmm, mapping a function over a collection is lazy, but if we only uh, map over three, then we get a transducer like here, and we can compose that transducer with the cat transducer to get a slightly more complicated transducer. And then the um, intro takes four seven as its last argument and the uh, compose transducer as its second argument and that should work as well. Yeah, that works as well. Okay, so internally what will happen is that um, cat is called on conch giving us a reducing function and then map3 is called on that giving us a reducing function and then later when that reducing function is actually applied we first map and then we cat and then we conch basically. Okay, if you're confused by the order, simply watch my first transducer video. Okay, and it, it turns out this pattern is so common, comp map cat, that there is um, a function map cat that we can simply use. It gives us the exact same result. And if we peek into the implementation, you can see the arity, which only takes a function basically, yeah, it does exactly the same thing as we did. Comp map f cat, um, comp map three cat. So three is simply f in our case. Okay, so now we got rid of the lazy for or the lazy map. That's quite beautiful. How do we apply this to our problem? So we still have our into uh, solo recursive call that didn't change, but now we have a transducer here, a map cat over the um, recursive cross invocation. And then we start with the um, farmer bank. That was the guy that we initially forward over or mapped over. And if we compile that, um, that also works with a pretty print here. Okay, and I think that's quite cool. So initially I wasn't sure if I could turn it into a completely eager version, but it turns out uh, <laughs> it was possible. I'm not sure if this is a well-known pattern. I don't want to say it. I discovered it. I found it for myself. Okay, cool. Um, now, why didn't I submit this guy? Um, yeah, simply because I think transducers are probably not known outside of the closure community. Let me know <laughs> if this is somehow wrong. And what I found also funny is working on this problem. So we want to move the farmer and his things across a river. And I think in one of Richicki's talks, he said that transduce basically means lead something over into something else. So <laughs> leading a farmer with his animals over a river with the help of transducers. I think that's somehow beautiful in itself. 